Hi, my name is uh, Pastor X. Lee Miguel of Christ's Heritage Church. Thank you for visiting our YouTube channel. Uh, it is our prayer that our preaching videos would benefit you in your Christian walk and it would benefit you in your ministry with others and especially your local church. However, if you are a part of a local church, if you are a member of a local church, please um, uh, worship with them every Lord's Day. Please participate in the gathering. And if you have any questions about theology or, or the Bible, please reach out to your local church pastor. We praise God for technology and we hope that uh, uh, this video would benefit you. Thank you. Last week po, uh, I mentioned the Guardians of the Galaxy. And it's one of those movies na uh, since nag-flourish yung movies ng um, Marvel Cinematic Universe, talagang uh, isa to sa mga inabangan natin. Hindi man natin naging favorite, but we do know na if it's from Marvel, uh, if it's if this is something that we have to see. So undeniably, Marvel Studios is doing an excellent work in making sure that us, the viewers, are on the edge of our seats wanting more from them. Aside from the actors who are in the front, uh, the forefront, na ating napapanood, who communicate with us the story through the way they act, uh, yung mga characters na pinoportray nila, we also have to recognize that uh, there are others who are working in the uh, back end or behind the scenes. Uh, dito yung mga directors, members ng visual effects, sound effects, costume design, etc. And they take care of the different matters so that the actors can focus on their acting. But collectively, they are able then to deliver us great movies. They are able to deliver, deliver these uh, with such finesse that we receive it now and enjoy them. Now, there are certain men in the church as well that are working behind the scenes. Now, they serve in such a way that they relieve the pastors who are in the forefront of other matters so that the pastors can focus on the ministry of the Word. In this way, they also act as somewhat guardians, making sure that the church is protected by the ministry of the Word, that the church receives the spiritual nourishment that it needs. So, um, in continuity of last week, as much as I wanted to title this Guardians of the uh, God's Family Volume 2, I think uh, the more fitting title that would give us an overview of uh, what we will be discussing to today is Behind the Scene Guardians, o yung mga guardians na hindi natin nakikita sa uh, lime light and this is still continuing on our uh, on our series on the church life at uh, titingnan natin ang ating passage ngayon sa 1st Timothy chapter 3 verses 88 to 13 so we can turn your bibles with me so we can um, uh, read it I'll, I'll read it out loud and just follow with your eyes i'll read from ESV to verse 8 deacons likewise must be dignified, not double-tongued, not addicted to much wine, not greedy for dishonest gain. They must hold the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience and let them also be tested first. Then let them serve as deacons if they prove themselves blameless. Their wives likewise must be dignified, not slanderers, but sober-minded, faithful in all things. Let deacons each be the husband of one wife, managing their children and their own households well. For those who serve well as deacons gain a good standing for themselves and also great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of His Word. Um, just kind, kindly join me in just a short word of prayer. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you again. For this day that we are able to uh, receive the truth 
from your word, Lord. Thank you uh, for the deacons behind the scenes who have made, uh, who have uh, prepared this place that we may receive your word without any hindrances, Panginoon. Uh, may we be focused on you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, just uh, to borrow from the um, Gospel Transformation Bible, uh, sabi nila doon sa commentary na yon na yung thrust nitong liham na ito ni Paul kay Timothy is the importance of godly living in the Christian life. So meaning to say that people ought to see the life of Christians living out the gospel which supposedly has saved us. Otherwise, if we if they do if this is not evident in our lives, then what is coming out of our mouths, what we profess would seem Hypocrisy, false profession. Or worse, uh, if they do not see this as false profession, then you may have represent, uh, misrepresented the gospel and you may have dragged them down the wrong path. So in relation to Paul's instruction to Timothy, so chapter 1, to charge certain men to stop teaching false teachings and keep the purity of the gospel within the church, uh, we learned last week of what kind of men should be standing in front, shepherding, teaching the congregation. And the, these are the pastors nga. But essentially, they ought to be above reproach in character and mature in their understanding of the gospel. And also, they have to be able to teach these well to the church. Now, on our verse today, Paul shifts from the pastor to what obviously is another office. The very first word of the verse, deacons. He tells Timothy of uh, what seems to be a, a virtually similar qualification na nakita rin natin on the qualification of the elders. Ano ano yung mga ito? Uh, just, let's just cite a few examples. Una sinabi niya, the, the, the deacons should be dignified, not double-tongued. Similarly, makikita ho natin to in the, uh, in the elders... Uh, of on a different uh, wordings na ang elders daw dapat sober-minded, self-controlled, and respectable. So there's this idea of self-mastery. They both should not be addicted to much wine. Uh, on, the, on, on the deacons, he said, not greedy for dishonest gain. So we can relate that to not being a lover of money na nakita natin sa elders. Must hold to the mystery of the faith. Meaning na intindihan nila yung gospel talaga with their full understanding. So, sa qualification ng elders, di ba, sinabi doon that the elders should not be recent converts. In a sense, may understanding din dapat sila of the same gospel. They both have to be husband of one wife, which advances yung faithfulness that is required. And they can ha manage their own household well. So, it's like Paul was saying that uh, kung ipapaiklain niya yung kanyang sinulat ngayon, it's, it, it's like saying that deacons likewise must have the same characteristics as the elders. And it could have ended there. But the question then remains, why then call these separate men na parehas lang naman yung character, but nila, but natin sila tinatawag na deacons? but di na lang natin sila tawagin lahat na uh, overseer or elder? And Kung titingnan natin yung ating text ngayong umaga, uh, hindi natin to madaling makikita nang nandito lang tayo sa ating text ngayon. So we will take a peek quickly dun sa binasa natin kanina sa scripture reading in Acts 6. May kita natin dun yung sagot. Sinabi dun ng mga apostles na it is not right that we should give up the preach uh, give up preaching of the word of God to serve tables. So they go on saying, we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So that is where the apostles who stand also as the shepherds of those times um, decided and have chosen to devote themselves. And tama naman yun. The pastoral office must be reserved for the ministry of the word. So therefore... A new office, a different office, must be upheld for serving. And these are the office of, uh, this is the office of the deacons. Now, 
these office work hand in hand with the pastor with the pastors or elders with one common goal so they do not conflict or contrast each other the common goal is that god's household may be kept holy at makikita ho natin yan later on and that is why the message that i want to advance to everyone this morning is this so if last week we saw god's love in God keeping his household through the guidance or shepherding of upright men, today's message still shows us the love of God, but this time that the household of God is edified through the service of upright men. So ang sambahayan ng Diyos ay napagtitibay, napagyayabong sa pagsisilbi ng mga matuwid na kalalakihan. And so we will look at this even more in detail by using two points. First is the servant's paradigm o yung modelo o pamantayan ng mga naglilingkod. And the next one or uh, point number two is purified in the course of time. Meaning through as time passes, ang nagiging dalisay, mas nalilinis mula sa kasalanan yung simbahan. So let's consider the first point, the servant's paradigm. And in a large chunk of what we have read today, we again will see a familiar, uh, a familiarly distinct pattern that is seen in the diaconal qualifications. So distinct in the sense that in naming these qualifications, may kita natin na yung hinahanap for these offices are really set apart. Na talagang sila ay yung noticeable na different and are bearing these qualifications. Familiar in the sense na nakita na natin to previously. And these are also required of the, uh, the other leader that we have discussed last week. But before we proceed, again, I'd like for us to go back to Acts 6. Now, we will not read the entire uh, uh, portion of 1 to 7 because we've read it earlier. But I just want us to refresh ourselves and establish the deacon's role. So, kagaya nga nung nasa verse 6, ang nangyari, yung simbahan ho, they are increasing in number. And ang nangyari, nagkakaroon ng conflict between, between the Hellenists and uh, they were uh, arising against the, the Hebrews mainly because their widows were being neglected in the daily contribution. So, nagka, ang issue ho nila ay with regards to the daily distributions. And that can be an, uh, a topic for a uh, different uh, sermon uh, all in itself. But what I want us to focus on is the fact that there is an issue that's happening with church administration dahil lumalaki na ho yung simbahan nila. And so, this... Uh, this led to the the apostles being nung una is uh, kung, kung, kung i-entertain nila lahat they will be conflicted mahahati yung oras nila between teaching the people and also serving them and addressing yung kanilang mga church issues to which by God's grace they have give, God has given the apostles to wisdom to decide and choose kung ano yung mas importante. Kaya sabi ho ng mga apostles, we will remain, in essence, in, we will focus on the preaching, on the teaching of the word. And so, there comes the deacons who will help them naman in serving, in addressing yung mga church administration matters. So, deacons are the, uh, in essence, they are the official servants of the church that help the pastor by dealing with the church's temporal affairs. Now, I say official because uh, meaning sila yung kilala. But the service within the church is not limited para lang doon sa mga may title na deacons. Now, essentially, if the pastors can focus on the word, then the church will be well-nourished spiritually. 
Kagaya nga nung kanina sa Sunday School na naaral na isa sa mga uh, mga, mga tungkuli ng pastor, ang Ministry of the Word, ang nagiging effect nito sa simbahan ay nasa sanctify nito yung simbahan, uh, na-edify nito yung simbahan dahil sila ay napapakain ng pagkain spiritual na siyang magmumulat sa kanila sa kabutihan ng Panginoon at sa kasalanan ng mundo na dapat nilang talikuran. But granting now that we know that this is the role of the deacons, the question now remains if these this, this is these are um, this is what the, the deacons should be doing, why do they need the same characteristics na binanggit on the eldership na halos ang pinagkaiba lang nila ay yung elders are able to teach. Well, I can give you two reasons. Una ho sa lahat, it is important that they understand the role that they're in. Mahalaga hong alam nila kung ano ang position nila bilang deacons. E kagaya ho ng sinabi natin kanina, ito ay para ma-relieve yung, uh, yung mag-minister ng word of other concerns para makapag-focus lang sa pagtuturo ng salita ng Diyos. And that is only uh, that uh, them understanding that very purpose is only possible if they themselves are Christians. Kung alam nila kung ano yung nagligtas sa kanila, which is yung pagmulat nila dun sa salita ng Diyos, then alam nila na yung role nila is importante para sa kaligtasan ng iba pang nawawalang tupa at para sa pag-sanctify ng simbahan nila. Kaya importante na meron sila nitong characteristics na to kasi kailangan, evidently, dapat kristyano sila na merong mature understanding of the gospel. And so, that being said, if meron silang mature understanding of the gospel, then the spirit that has fruits should be evident sa buhay nila. And these fruits are yung love, uh, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control. Na kung titignan ho natin, di ba nagiging align siya, swak siya dun sa mga qualifications, na kung sumusunod itong mga taong to dun sa qualifications na binigay, ay makikita ngayon yung fruit ng Holy Spirit. Which then would prove na sila ay tunay na kristyano na mature in faith. Kaya ho mahalaga na meron sila nung karakteristics na ito dahil ito'y nagpapatunay na kristyano nga sila at naiintindihan nila kung ano yung importansya nung role na gaganapan nila. Pangalawa ho is that they are, like I said a while ago, official servants or they are recognized by the church. Na sa pag-aaral ho natin sa Sunday School ng mga duties ng deacons, isa sa natutunan natin na they exert some kind of, uh, dahil sa kanilang position, no? they exert some kind of leadership, some kind of influence dun sa, dun sa mga tao bilang uh, sila ay kinikilala ng congregation. Makikita natin in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, itong sample na to na si Paul, uh, sinabi niya dito, hinikayat niya yung simbahan ng Corinto na sila na kanilang kilalanin and in essence, they have to be subject themselves to the household of Stephanas. At yung household ni Stephanas na isang, uh, na isang uh, mananampalataya ay household na nagde-devote ng kanilang uh, ng sarili sa service sa mga saints nung panahon nila. And so, this influence na meron yung mga deacons uh, we can see that uh, we obviously this is not just for matters within like decision making about church affairs that they can persuade the congregation because of their position. Obviously because they are being looked upon as well, being in an office of influence in a sense, these qualifications then are important because as people look at them, ultimately their lifestyle, the way they live, should point to Christ who has demonstrated the perfect and ultimate act of service. Paano ko natin makikita yun? Ah, paalala lang ko natin, mga sarili na una sa lahat, tayong lahat ay hindi qualified to begin with para mag-serve sa Panginoon, para pumunta sa Kanyang presensya, para tawagin siyang Ama. All because of the fall. Dahil si Adam na 
na ang unang, uh, unang tao, ang unang tao na nilikha ng Panginoon ay nag-fail sa kanyang obedience kay God. At dahil dito tayong lahat ngayon ay pinanganak ng may kasalanan. We are born in sin. It's not like pinanganak tayong may kasalanan and kinaiinisan natin yung kasalanan na yun. We are born in sin. We love sin. We are slaves of it. We can't escape it. Uh, escape it. Sin makes us feel good about ourselves. But the reality is, habang nalulunod tayo sa pagpapakasarap natin sa ating mga kasalanan, sa pag-accept natin sa mga uh, ideologies na, na hindi uh, pleasing sa Panginoon, like yung, uh, uh, yung same-sex marriage, yung pagiging drunk in wine, yung pagiging unsubmissive ng mga uh, mga wives, yung pagiging uh, pagiging lording over ng mga uh, mga husbands nang hindi nila minamahal yung kanilang mga uh, mga asawa. Lahat ng ito ay mga uh, in a sense something that gives us pleasure dahil it it feeds on our pride na tayo yung nakikinabang tayo yung may gain. But in reality is, habang nalulunod tayo dito sa mga kasalanan na ito, tayo ay humaharap din sa consequences ng ating mga kasalanan. Yan ho ang huwag natin pakalimutan. That the consequences of our sins is us being banished from the presence of God like what happened to Adam. Now we are recipients of God's anger. Now we are recipients of the judgment of God na kanyang ipapataw sa tamang panahon. At ang kabayaran dito sa kasalanan na ito ay some, it's something that none of us are qualified to pay for. Kaya wala ho tayong pag-asa na makikita dito sa mundo. Sa kasapang, kasamaang palad, yun ho ang katotohanan. But not until... Christ served us. Out of God's unconditional love, Christ showed His service to us. Paano ho, nangyari, paano ho nangyari ito? In Philippians 2, sinabi niya ho dito na taking, ni Paul, sabi niya, taking the form of a bond servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, He humbled Himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross, a death he did not deserve, but nonetheless, he accepted. Para sa kabayaran, hindi ng kanyang kasalanan, pero ng ating kasalanan. And he is the only sacrifice that is worthy because he has lived a perfect life in obedience to the law, qualified to be a sacrifice that is pleasing to God. And because of it, hope and mercy is made available when Christ served His people by living and dying for them, by living and dying for us who repent and believe in His work. Again, back to our question, why then do the deacons need these qualifications? They need this so that in their service, they might point people not to themselves, but to Christ. Christ is the head of the church. Christ is our head. And the point of comparison is none other than Him. Christ is the servant's paradigm. And as deacons serve faithfully, knowing their roles in the local church, then it is Christ who is exalted highly. Sa natapos ng SEA Games, so, it, it came to a close probably about uh, a week or two weeks ago. Uh, marami ho tayo mga atleta na sumali and fortunately, nakapagbigay ho sila ng karangalan sa bansa by bringing uh, gold, uh, nag-place ho sila may gold medals, may silver and such. Like si, uh, si Kaloy Yulo sa gymnastics, si Heidelin sa weightlifting, si Obenya, uh, Obena sa pole vault. Because of winning uh, on their uh, respective disciplines, nakapagbigay ho sila ng karangalan sa Pilipinas. At hindi ho nila yung magagawa kung in the first place, 
wala sila nung skill that is needed they are not qualified in the sport na sinalihan nila they of course firstly had to have the skill they had to have the discipline the devotion to train themselves into achieving their goal na maging number one dun sa kung ano mang sport yun and in the victory that they achieve they uh, they bring honor sa sa Pilipinas and tayo rin nagiging proud din tayo dun sa kanilang mga achievements now they would not have served the country well if in their sport they were not again qualified in the first place and it's the same with the church more importantly in our local church putting unqualified deacons will produce a service that would not glorify God now what would acts of service mean kung yung mga deacons who natin is living lives that are evidently unholy Kung nakikita ho natin sa buhay ng ating mga deacons ay hindi buhay ni Kristo, hindi modelo ni Kristo. Baliwala ho na sila ay nagserve dito sa simbahan. Baliwala ho na sila ay nagbib- nagdudulot sa atin ng, um, uh, ng uh, somehow kaginhawahan dito sa simbahan. I mean, the, the word of God would still flourish if it's still faithfully preached. Pero imagine yung nasasayang na sana nagbibigay ng kalwalhatian sa Panginoon. All because they are unqualified. And there are churches ngayon, uh, sa panahon natin, who do not follow the intended uh, purpose of this office. Sometimes, uh, malalaman natin, actually, hindi kilala sa ibang mga simbahan kung ano yung uh, office ng, ng deacons. And that is sad to... to to realize knowing how important the role of the deacon is so for us who have biblically qualified deacons who have deacons that live a christian life ito yung magiging challenge ngayon ho sa atin let us be united in upholding these biblical standards among these servants of god so hindi porki sila lang ho yung deacons uh, may selected few ay sila lang ho yung titingin at mag uphold nitong qualifications na to. Now, paano tayo makikiisa dito sa ganitong kla- dito sa endeavor na ito? I can give you two examples or two cases. Una sa lahat in the choosing of a deacon. Habang ho tayo ay lumalago, dadating ang panahon na madadagdagan ho ang mga deacons na ating i-appoint upang mag uh, tumayo at mag-serve sa ating simbahan. Let us take serious consideration in choosing, really looking at them, if they are qualified. Praying for them. When we selected the deacons, did we actually pray to God? Did we talk to God to ask God for guidance and wisdom to reveal to us kung i-expose kung sino yung mga merong potential, may mga diaconal gifts, and for the church to be able to recognize them? Tayo ho ba ay nakiisa sa pagdarasal nung ating hinahanap itong mga deacons na ito? Pwede ho natin uling gawin yon sa susunod na mangyari na tayo ay pumili. Pangalawa ho, we get to know them. We may, uh, pag dumating yung panahon na tayo ay mga, may mga na-nominate, do we act responsible church members by getting to know these uh, soon-to-be-elected deacons talagang kilalanin yung buhay nila and reflect it on these biblical qualifications. <clears throat> Pangatlo, do we constantly consult the scripture? Tayo ba ay patuloy nating ini-immerse yung sarili natin sa salita ng Diyos? Nang sa ganun ay talagang patuloy tayong ma-remind ng importance ng word and therefore give uh, give the the weight that is due in this office? Or hindi ko tayo nagbabasa ng salita ng Diyos pwera na lang kung leksyo continua. These if titingnan natin at di, uh, kung, kung titingnan natin parang aliit na bagay but this would greatly have an effect on our upholding of these biblical standards pangalawa ho yun ay sa pagpili ng mga uh, soon to be deacons pangalawa in dealing with our current deacons paano ko tayo makikisa do we pray for them I mean not just in uh, Wednesday uh, corporate meetings corporate prayer do we pray for the deacons para sila ay patuloy na 
uh, na i-enable ni God, na palakasin ni God, na i-strengthen yung faith nila para sila ay patuloy na makapagsinbe dito sa simbahan. Also, do we check up on them? Deacon, kamusta ka na? Deacon, how can I pray for you? Deacon, may kailangan ka ba tulong na pwede kong gawin? Do we actually communicate with them? Also, do we witness their lives in such a way na binabangga talaga natin sa scripture? Masunurin ba talaga si Deacon? Si Deacon ba talaga ay talagang scriptural pa rin? O medyo lumilis na ng landas? And that is important. So that if they are following the word of God, we can encourage them and commend them. If not, so that we can lovingly rebuke them, speak to them that they may return to the correct path. Um, one of the books na binasa ho natin sa ating, um, sa ating Sunday School regarding yung sa Office of the Deacons is one that was written by Cornelis Van Dam. And dito, sinabi ho niya, and I quote, So, each office is a ministry or a diakonia. He was referring to the uh, office of the pastor and the office of the deacons. There is a common identity that binds them together. Both ministers to God's people in the service of the risen Christ. The elders do so with the word. The deacon does so by providing relief to those in need. So in essence, dito sa atin ngayon, providing what we need para ho tayo ay makatanggap ng salita ng Diyos as much as possible ng walang hindrance. Each office has its distinct role and place. There is a strong bond between these offices in terms of administering Christ's love and mercy by word and deed. So it can be expected that these two offices in work in close cooperation with each other. Also, it said there that these two offices work side by side for the cause of Christ to ensure the joy of salvation in the congregation. End quote. It is not only the leaders ngayon who, if we see these leaders work in unity, I say it's not just them who should be working in unity. We, as the bodies, must move in unity as well. Thus, we must uphold the biblical standards of our guardians. Having this unity in upholding these standards will give us confidence that those that we put in office will work side by side for the cause of Christ to ensure our joy in the salvation that was brought to us. And as the joy of the gospel continues dito sa ating simbahan, it contributes greatly sa ating sanctification. And that is my last point. Purified in the course of time. Meaning, nagiging dalisay, nalilinis mula sa kasalanan sa pagdaan ng panahon. May kita ho natin sa last part nung binata sa natin sa scripture, that the deacons that serve well in their ministry gain a good standing in and, and good standing and confidence in the faith. So we see two things that are being gained by the deacons: good standing for themselves and great confidence in the faith that is in Christ Jesus. A good standing. To borrow from John Stott's commentary, sabi niya dito na this good standing means it's a position of honor in the esteem of God and the church. Meaning, sa paningin ng Diyos at sa paningin ng tao, okay yung standing mo, okay ka. And obviously, uh, God will be pleased. God will be pleased if deacons does their task faithfully. We see in Matthew 25, Jesus teaching about the parable of the talents. Uh, where in dun sa storya, dun sa parable, uh, to the servants who did well with the talents that were left by the master sa kanila, pagbalik ng master, sabi, sabi, well done, a good and faithful servant. So for the deacons, we also see this principle. Kaya sinabing they will be in good standing as they do their job faithfully, sincerely, then it's a task that is pleasing to God. 
Now also, the same would, be, would go for the church as well. Uh, a task well done that is evident in the eyes of the church, then it's a task that, uh, that is, uh, that's worth commending sa, mga mat- sa mata ng, uh, sa, ng simbahan. So they're in good standing with the church as well. Now the next thing that Paul uh, tells us is great confidence in the faith. Great confidence in the faith. And again, borrowing from John Stott's commentary, sabi niya, na itong great confidence na to is actually the assurance or paresia which is freedom of speech or boldness before God or human beings. Faithful service will increase their Christian confidence. So meaning na because they have served faithfully and sincerely nang walang tinatagong uh, kabulastugan, then they can stand confidently saying that they have done the task in good faith. Magkita ho natin to in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. This was Paul speaking bago siya, um, yung, ito yung huling liham niya kay Timothy bago siya mamatay. Kasi po alam natin na siya i-execute and he knows this. At sabi ho niya at the end of the letter, I have fought the good fight, fight. <clears throat> I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. May kita ho natin yung boldness niya knowing that he had been faithful in the ministry that was given to him. Verse 8, Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to those who have loved His appearing. So for those that are faithful and true, and has accomplished the task that the Lord has given to them, then, sabi ni Paul, there is a reward that will be coming from the Lord. So there is good standing, and also, ngayon, you can confidently fo- uh, boast in the faith that you have in the gospel. So, individually, deacons in accomplishing their duties, obviously, nagbe-benefit sila. But, in reality, as they do their job faithfully, it is not just them who is benefiting. More so, nagbe-benefit din ho yung local church kung saan sila naninilbihan. Again, taking uh, the uh, quoting from uh, Cornelius Van Dam, dun sa binasa natin kanina. Sabi nga, there is a strong bond between the offices of the deacons and the pastors. Uh, in terms of administering Christ's love and mercy by word and deed. So if the pastors uh, primarily are able to minister or maipasa, may extend yung pagmamahal ni Kristo ng Diyos, through word, for the deacons, primarily they're able to extend it through their deed, through their service. The church experiences Christ when the diaconal task is done faithfully. Sa, <clears throat> sa mga company, ho, uh, usually uh, yung mga employees, uh, gustong gusto nila na kapag merong mga events, may mga incentives na binibigay yung company. Uh, usually, yung mga task organizers nito uh, would fall on the office nung, uh, nung, ng human resource, sabi ng aking wife, who previously was a, an HR. Sila yung, kapag ka merong, ano may outing, sila yung nag-ocular. Nag, uh, Pag may events, sila rin yung nangangasiwa. Pag kami mga incentives, though it would it may be for different uh, uh, departments, minsan dumadaan sa kanila, lalo na pagka pang, uh, pang buong company. So, HR department, yung nagiging parang pinaka, uh, uh, pinaka task head. Now, when this is done faithfully and successfully nung HR department, sino ba yung pinasasalamatan nung mga employee? ba si boss? Boss, salamat sa pa-outing. Boss, salamat sa paampaw. Boss, salamat sa extra bonus, sa, ex- sa incentive. Minsan magugulat yung boss, ang ginawa ko? Wala naman akong ginawa. But, it is the, lo- uh, the Lord, it is the boss who is recognized dun sa paggawa nung HR, nung task niya faithfully on behalf of the company. Now, in the same way, now, though physically Christ has not returned yet, it is His love and His mercy that we feel 
when deacons serve faithfully. But there are times, you know, Christians forget that they are part of a church, sad to say. Christians forget that their Christian life is and should be part of their church life. And that their lives are now intertwined with other believers, especially in the local church. And in neglecting to understand this, they neglect to appreciate the service that these deacons are doing and therefore lessening or hindering themselves from experiencing the love of Christ. So the last challenge for us, especially in this church, is that we gladly receive the benefits, the love of God that is coursed through the service of deacons, of, his, of this God-appointed role. Now the big question is, how? And I can give you, again, some practical applications. Uh, but I would like to give a, a disclaimer uh, that as we give applications, I, I do not intend to point fingers at anyone. Now, if at all I'm pointing the finger at myself, um, to, to quote a brother nung meron siyang ginawang announcement last week, and I quote, actually, na-convict ako dito, end quote. <laughs> now, in proceeding, sa pagtingin natin dito, no? Isang halimbawa kung saan natin matatanggap ang benefits na, 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 ng, uh, through the service of the deacons. The deacons were the ones who led or spearheaded na tayo ay magkaroon itong place na nirerentahan natin. It was the deacons who uh, looked at the budget, kung pasok ba, kamusta yung standing natin ngayon, masusustain pa ba ito. It is them. Now, do we receive the benefit na meron tayo dito sa simbahan na ito by making sure, una sa lahat, we attend and we celebrate the Lord's Day? Or do we make excuses pag konting <clears throat> inubulang, ah, masama pakiramdam ko, virtual. Sad to say, wala na tayong virtual ngayon. You have to attend. Do you neglect to receive the blessing that Christ is giving you through the gathering of the church? Isa pa ho. Deacons, and uh, just to also to uh, give uh, a bit of um, rec- uh, of commendation as well. Uh, sometimes it, it's not just those that are uh, that have this title of deacons that actually serve. May kita wala natin sa simba natin. There are actually others who have the aponal gifts who willingly serve. Uh, and so, going back, the deacons. Uh, there are deacons who arrive early to open the doors on the Lord's day. Paano natin tatanggapin yung pagmamahal ni Kristo dito? <clears throat> Do we go to the church in the Lord's Day at exactly 9 a.m.? Para ho saan? Para tayo ay sama-sama na mag-open sa Lord's Day ng nagdarasal, ng nakikipag-usap sa Diyos. Participating and opening in the prayer, in the pastor's reading of a passage para ho tayong lahat ay maihanda sa buong araw ng pagsamba. Next, deacons prepare the liturgy uh, whether ito ay yung nakikita ho nating printed or yung digital diba? it's the deacons and those that serve alongside them that labor for this that serve for this do we take in the benefit by actually looking at them guiding us through the liturgy or do we leave them dun sa seat para ma-reserve yung upuan um, or we don't read them at all just try to listen uh, imagine the benefit kung tayo ay both nakikinig and both are guided visually. So those are simple things, practical things na ating natatanggap dapat. Isa pa, deacons uh, have, uh, mo- they monitor the, the sounds, they do the recordings para may ma-upload sa, sa YouTube eventually. Now, do we receive this benefit by making sure Ang ganda ng sound system natin, do we listen to the word that is preached? Do we, um, do we make sure na tayo ay in focus? Do we, we make sure na tayo ay uh, walang ibang nasa isip kundi yung pag, pag nagkap lang ng salita ng Diyos? 
O bago tayo pumunta dito, tinapos muna natin yung um, yung yung sinusubaybayan nating uh, Korean novela last night. Pagdating natin dito, antok tayo, tumatagos na sa atin, sayang yung sound system. In essence, we do not receive the word of God, the love of God kasi we close ourselves to these simple practical things that God courses through His servants para ho tayo ay makareceive ng ministry of the word ng walang hindrance. Now, there are still a lot that the deacons have been doing to help us. Pagod na ho akong umiwas dahil ho ilan na ho yung tinamaan ako. Pero, uh, there are, uh, alam, uh, alam nyo kung kung i-immerse lang natin yung sarili natin and be real, really be committed covenant members through these simple things mararamdaman ho talaga natin yung pagmamahal ni Kristo and in receiving the love of Christ in the gospel this greatly affects us as we are daily being sanctified by the word of God so the service of these upright men through them we are purified in the course of time Gaya nga ho nung uh, binasa natin kanina sa Second London Baptist Confession of Faith, no, uh, 14, uh, uh, chapter 14, paragraph 1. Uh, the grace of faith whereby the elect are enabled to believe to the saving of their souls is the work of the Spirit of Christ in their hearts and is ordinarily wrought by the ministry of the Word. Yun ho yung sabi ganun ho ka-importante yung ministry ng salita ng Diyos. <clears throat> and let's look in no other place than in Scripture itself. Sabi sa Romans 10, sabi ni Paul, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in Him of whom they have never heard, and that is part of the task of the pastors, that Lord, the Lord will be heard on the Lord's day in the pulpit. And how are they to hear without someone preaching? So what we can get from this is that there is no hope available for the dying soul, or there is no other sustenance na makukuha ng isang believer apart from the ministry of the Word. The Christians cannot grow and mature outside the ministry of the Word. Now, teka Neil, lumalayo ka na. Hindi yan yung deacons, di ba? Di ba yung ministry of the Word? Sabi mo nga, preacher yan eh. Yes, it is the job of the preachers. It is the job of the pastors. But the deacons assigned for <clears throat> working behind the scenes make sure that the elders that are equipped, the elders that are able to teach, that are assigned for the work of the minister, uh, the word, uh, the word ministry. They make sure that these men are able to do their task faithfully and thoroughly. And the end goal, gaya nga nung sinabi kanina sa ating Sunday school in Ephesians 4, in the word ministry, we, the saints, are being equipped for the building of the body of Christ. So may I leave you with this thought, brothers and sisters. In our uh, Christian life, matagal pa ho tayo magsasama-sama at mabubuhay. In our, in our Christian life, there will be seasons of trouble, of challenges, and there will be seasons of joy. Through the service of these upright men, we are able to receive proper spiritual shepherding. And thus, we are able to boast. We have confidence in the gospel that's being preached to us. We are able to magnify the Lord for who He is and what He has done because we are reminded seamlessly every Lord's Day. We are able to taste and see that the Lord is good because it is properly administered to us. In the household of God, we look to the deacons to model Christ-like service so that the church's edification through the Word may continue seamlessly. So may the Word of God continue to shape our lives into one that is lived for His glory. Let us pray.
Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this day, the Lord's Day, your day that we that you have allowed us to set apart solely for us to be able to worship you, to glorify you, to, to benefit from your word, to benefit from you speaking to us. Panginoon, ang dalangin ko lang po ay ang lahat ng nandito sa simbahan na ito ay um, magpatuloy sa kanilang pananampalataya to remain in the local church that they're staying in here in Christ Heritage Church and be committed members who will serve in the sense one another looking to the models of the leaders that you have given them. Uh, Panginoon, uh, ikaw lang sana ang maging sentro ng araw na ito, not just in the corporate worship, but even outside as we go our separate ways. May this day not end with us having different and other endeavors in our minds, Father. This day alone is for you. May you alone be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.